In this video, I'd like to address the points that we covered in the coordinate geometry topic. So first of all, we looked at the distance between two points, which we had a formula, which is based on Pythagoras. Then we looked at the midpoint of an interval, where we average the x and average the y's to find the midpoint. We looked at the gradient. If we recall, that was rise on run, where we had the difference in the y's and divided by the difference in the x's. Then we look at parallel lines that have the same gradient. We look at graphing a linear equation. Um, then we look at the question, does a point lie on the line? We then follow by looking at the equation line, determining the equation line, y equals mx plus b. Where m is the gradient and b is the y-intercept. Then finally we looked at non-linear functions or curves. So let's have a look. First of all, the distance between two points. We've got here from Pythagoras, we can see that this is a right angle triangle. And from Pythagoras, we know that the square on the hypotenuse is the sum of the squares on the other two sides. So we have let's get my pen working. Yeah. We have mn squared is equal to 5 squared plus 3 squared. So m n is then going to equal the square root of 25 plus 9 is equal to the square root of 34. Four. Let's have a look at the formula which we also have, which again is very similar. It is based on Pythagoras. So if our first point, this is the coordinates of, this is m is x1, comma, y1, and n is x2 comma y2 we can then say the distance is equal to the square root of x2 which is 4 minus 1 all squared plus uh, y what are we saying y2 we're going to say that is 2 minus 7 all squared and what do we end up with d is equal to square root of 4 minus 1 is 3 squared, plus 7 minus 2 is negative 5, negative 5 all squared, negative 5 all squared, which is going to equal the square root of 34. So, this formula here is d equals square root of x2 minus x1 all squared, plus y2 minus y1 all squared. Again, you can see it comes from Pythagoras, and it's the same whether we draw it out and draw the triangle, or we just use the points. The next thing we looked at was determining the midpoint. Oops, we're not going that fast. Midpoint. Okay, to calculate the midpoint, we need to look at, we know it's here, right? So we've drawn it out, we know it's here. So we work out it's the average. The, the midpoint is equal to average the x's, x1 plus x2 all on 2. And the y's is y1 plus y2 all on 2. So, in this case, this is our x1. This is x1, comma, y1. And this is x2, comma, y2. And we can say our midpoint is 1 plus 5 all divided by 2. And the y's, we're going to say 2 plus 4 all divided by 2. So our midpoint is 1 plus 5 is 6, so that's 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 2 plus 6, 2, 2 plus 4 is 6, again it's going to be 3. Now what did we say from looking at it? It is point here, and it is actually 3, 3, which is what we coordinate. So this one here, it, oops, is the midpoint formula that you need to make sure you're familiar with. Next up, we have gradient. Now, the gradient is the measure of the steepness, and we said the gradient is rise on run. There are several different types of gradient we can look at. The special types here we've got zero, zero to a gradient when it's directly across the equation. This line could be y equals one, or y equals a constant. Okay, we actually have no rise. It's running, but it's not rising. This one here, this could be the equation of x equals two. Okay, it's got no y value, lots of y values, but there's no y component. 
This one, it's got a continual rise, so the rise is infinite, and the run, there is no run. This one, when we're sloping towards the, the right over here, this is a positive gradient. When we're sloping towards the neck, this is a negative gradient. As you can see here, this is positive side, positive side. This is negative, negative. This is how I remember it. Positive and a positive makes a positive. A negative and a, a negative also makes a positive. Over this side, we've got negative and a positive, positive and a negative. When it's pointing to this quadrant here, a positive and a negative makes a negative, and a negative and a positive also makes a negative. Okay, so I've just got a way of remembering these ones. Now, let's have a look. We've got our formula. It, the formula for the whole gradient is the difference in the y's, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Again, that's rise over run. The y, see the change in y's is the rise, and the run is the change in x's. So we've got the difference in the y's over the difference in the x's. So let's have a look here. Gradient equals, we're rising. In this case, we are rising. Uh, we're going to say y2, we're going to say 4 minus 2 divided by 5 minus 1. But that's equal to 4 minus 2 is equal to 2 divided by four, 5 minus 1 is 4. 4. So the gradient is equal to 1 on 2. That's a positive gradient. Let's look at this one over here. Here we have y2. In this case we are x1, y1, x2, y2. And we're going to say y2 minus y1, so we're going to say 2 minus 4 divided by 5 minus 1, which is equal to negative 2 divided by 4, which is equal to negative 1. So in this case, you can see we've got a negative. Again, it's pointing over to this, so I've got a, my negative here, and I've got a positive up here. So a negative and a positive make a negative. As I said, this one is a positive. Next one, what do we do next? Once we looked at parallel lines, in this case, the gradients are the same in both cases, okay? Equal distance between it, so the M1 is equal to M2, and we had this one. Types of questions they could ask you here was, the line passes through the point Z and V. What is the gradient of a line parallel to this one? Okay, so first of all, we need to work out what is the gradient of this line. So. Here we have x1, x1, oh, let's fix that up, cross it out, so we're going to say x1, y1, and this is my x2, my y2. So, we had our formula for gradient is m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's the difference in the y's divided by the difference in the x's. So what do we have? We're going to say 2 minus negative 1 divided by negative 1 minus 8, which is equal to 2 minus negative 2 minus minus 1 is going to be 3. Negative 1 minus 8 is minus 9. So that is equal to minus 1 on 3. So therefore, the gradient... Therefore, gradient of the parallel line will be negative 1 on 3. Okay? Next, what do we do? Graphing lines. We've done this a couple of times now. Basically, what we need to do, we want to draw the graph of this equation. They give you this graph and they want you to put it in. So let's have a look at x is 0, x is 1, and x is 2. At x is 0, what's the value of y? So we can say y is equal to 2 times 0 plus 1. Now 2 times 0 is 0 plus 1 is 1. Then the next one, so at, this is at x equals 0. x equals 1. y is equal to 2 times 1 plus 1 is equal to 3. So we can put the 3 up here. Then we say x is equal to 2. y is equal to 2 times 2 plus 1 is equal to 5. 
we now can plot those. So I've got 0, 1, and then I said at 1, I've got a 3, and then at 2, I've got 5. Okay, now I go and get my trusty little ruler out and put that here. And let's hope this works. And I want to draw the straight line that goes through those. Very nice. Okay, put that back on. And whenever we're drawing a line, we always make sure we put our arrows at the end, even if they don't look fantastic. Okay. Now, what's the next question? What is the y-intercept? The y-intercept is where it's cutting the y-axis. So the y-intercept where it's cutting it is at 1. This is at, is at y is equal to 1. Let's also look at that point here. It's also up there, isn't it? Okay. Now, where, what is the x-intercept here? The x-intercept is also, this is at x equals 1. That's just the name. We call these ones intercepts, okay? This is where it's intercepting the y-axis, and this is where it's intercepting the x-axis. The y-intercept is particularly important because it actually lets us, it's this point up here. Let's go to the next one. Does this point, so the question in the exam would be, does this point lie on the line? And you go, I, I can easily see from here, these are the points that do lie on the line. If I know this point, this point is 1, 2. Okay, so unless I have the graph, I can't see that, but it actually does take time to draw out the graph. The way to determine if the point, if this point is on that line, we substitute in the values. So let's have a look. At, does, so, if we put these values here, this is x and this is y. Let's substitute in there. We can say, does 4 equal 1 minus 2 times 1? 1 minus 2 times 1 is minus 1, so it doesn't equal. Therefore, point 1 minus 4 is not on the line. Okay, And I'm expecting it, a statement is not on the line. But it's, bas it's basically a matter of substituting this point back into the equation they give you. It's quite straightforward. Next one. Equation of the line the form y equals mx plus b. Now, we said that this one here is the gradient and this one here is the y-intercept. So let's have a look at one. First, so the question is find the equation of the line. Now we've already talked about finding gradients. So I've told you before that gradient m is equal to the rise on the run or it's also equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now from this simple diagram can you tell me what the rise is? If we're looking just here, the rise is 2, and the run is 2. Okay, so we can say m is equal to rise. It rises 2, and it runs 2. Now, is it a positive or negative gradient? Remember I said I put the pluses up here. I, put, I do it in my head just so I know where it is. Right? right, so over here, it's between a plus and a negative. So it's going to be a negative gradient. So I'm going to say gradient is equal to negative 1. Now the y-intercept, the b, comes across here, and it's this point here. So I can say y equals negative x plus 2. The next thing I've asked it in general form. Now general form is in the form ax plus b, y, plus c equals 0. And they're all on one side. So, let's put this one in the same general form. We want everything to be over one side. So let's, and we want the x to be a positive. So let's, again, this is algebra. Let's go back. Let's, what do we need to do to get this negative x over onto this side? We need to add a negative x. So add a negative x to both sides x plus y and we also need to get rid of this 2 so to get rid of this 2 on this side I need to subtract a 2 so subtract a 2 from this side also subtract a 2 from that side minus 2 equals 0 okay so we've moved everything over onto one side so this is general form this is the y equals mx plus b form when the m is the gradient and the b is the y and this is the general form where all the terms are over that side 
The last thing I want to quickly look at today is nonlinear graphs. Now, we know a linear. Can you see the word line in that? That's y equals 5x plus 7. Here, when the coefficient, when the x has a coefficient, which is fine, a positive or negative, but it has no powers, this is a straight line. This one here, if you can see, is y equals x squared, and this is y equals negative x squared. There's a reflection. So you can notice here I've got the power up here. And this one's y equals 1 on x. Okay? This is not in the straight format as y is equal to ax plus something. Okay? So this is a parabola and this is a hyperbola. Right? These are and so they're nonlinear graphs. What we've been looking most in this x of this chapter is linear equations. Okay, so I hope this helps. Go back and review these and have a look at some other questions um, that you will, yeah, that will be fine, helpful for your exam. Okay, bye.